name is Marjorie Mweni Peter. I was born and raised in Kitui. Uh, it's a remote area, very dry. Um, I come from a family of seven kids. I'm the youngest and I went to primary level. I finished high school. I went to the university. I did a, a degree in community development and social work. Uh, after then, um, I realized that I've wasted my time in campus because when you go to campus, you are not taught about uh, skills. What next after you finish campus? Then that's when I realized that like, I need to wake up and I need to realize who I am. I need to find the real me. So that's when I decided to uh, join this WhatsApp group, going to children's home, doing the donation, social work and all those things. That's when I realized my passion about community work. Um, and then I realized that in life, you can't work alone. You need to have a group of people who are supporting you. Uh, so that's when we came up with a group for WhatsApp. It's called Youth and Women Empowerment. It's, it's a group for all people, the young age to adults. So we don't have a limitation for where you come from, whether you are a Kamba or a Maasai or a Luo. So we will come all people to join in and get to impact people socially, economically, and um, uh, spiritually. I started my business, it's called uh, Busy Bill Limited Company, it's registered. We also have a website. Through that, uh, the little amount of money that I get to sell, uh, because of the community work that I do, a little amount of it goes to Amazing Grace. We do foundation whereby we feed them, the kids, we bring clothes, we do like a uh, empowerment through soap making, the hand wash. We also educate them about uh, their goals. They need to have goals and settings. Busy Bee, most of all, it's a community organization. Like it's a community work, whereby I get to empower them economically. If I find a, a young woman or a young girl who doesn't have a job, I actually encourage them not to just stay at home, to venture into something. So I came up with a, with an organization whereby at least someone can get their own money and earn from it. So with Busy Bee, we teach you about beekeeping, we teach you about branding, we teach you about um, networking with other people. Oh, because, of, because if you have a brand, you need people, because those people, they'll be buying from you. And they're the one to connect you to different platform that you don't know about. Busy B, I started in the year 2020 during the COVID time. Uh, by then, uh, I was employed, but I was fired. Because uh, when the corona came, we were told that no, guys, you won't continue because they are closing down. So I decided to go home. When I went home, I stayed there for about four months. I was reading, I was doing charity. I started by donating uh, the hand wash in my community. So through that, uh, I got people who were amazed by the, the charity work that I was doing. So that's when I got an opportunity. I said that uh, instead of just staying home idle, let me do something economical that will give me money at the end of the time. So I got an idea for honey because I come from an area where there's a lot of honey, there's a lot of baobab powder, there's a lot of tamarind. Uh, and my father is a beekeeper and my uncle. So I decided that let me try selling honey because people are sick and they can I can help them boost their immune system and in Nairobi people get fake honey so I realized that that's a good venture I started with 600 shillings only yeah so through that um, I didn't get help from my family or anyone I just got my little saving that I had the 600 I went and purchased honey from the local farmers uh, through that I sold like uh, through WhatsApp I got my first client I got from a WhatsApp group it for business people I'd already joined there so I get I got that customer she told me like the honey it's very good 
I got more people through social media. I kept on posting and posting. I told them my honey is very original. It doesn't have any adulterations. That is the sugars, the molasses, and everything. So I dis I took that as a chance, as an idea. Uh, through that, I go I started scaling up until I started purchasing like five kgs. But I was saving the little income that I was having, and then on the other side, I had another side hustle. I got uh, employed. Uh, a friend of mine was selling smokies and mayai. So through that, I got and I was paid 250 a day. So that money that I was paid is the one that was paying for my rent. Then the profit that I was getting from the honey, I saved it. By I started on August 2020, and by December 2020. I had already saved up to 20,000 profit from the honey. From the 600 shillings, my first profit was 200. Yeah, so through that, you know, I was buying at a retail. I decided to go into my home. I sent myself there. I didn't send anyone because when you send someone, they can give you the fake honey. So I got a honey at a lower price. Um, I got a kg, the raw honey now, I was buying at uh, around 200 shillings so through that when you process yourself you get the margin goes up for the profits yeah so that's when i started making lots of profits uh through processing my own honey now instead of buying retail i started buying wholesale from one kg now in the next month i bought five from five kg i went to seven from seven in 2021 i went to 107 kgs of honey then from that I went to 200, now I went to tons of honey. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was just discipline. I had to, I had to sacrifice myself. There are some things I need, I, I never used to buy like clothes or parties. I avoided all those that so that I can build my own company. Yeah, and then I had mentors who are training me on how to do it, how to go about the business. It was very easy for me. What makes honey to be different is the first thing it, it's biblical it's written in the Bible uh, as you can see the children of Israel were told to go to Anna and they were promised honey and milk so that makes honey uh, it's a gold yeah it's a gold thing that you can invest in I'd advise any young youth or woman who is suffering to just venture into the business because first of all it's medicinal uh, when you have a cough You'll get cured when you have low immunity, it will help to boost your immunity. When you don't have strength, it helps to boost your bones. It helps to cure, even for pregnant women. It helps to heal the placenta. I sell organic honey. I'm a beekeeper. So I, like I said, I need to bring a solution to the market, to the community because the Maasai they are selling fake honey and I decided to sell the original honey by giving people what I would consume and what I would advise another friend of mine or a customer or a friend or a neighbor anyone so it differentiates my company to other brands and then I empower people it's not my thing it's not my brand I also empower other women and youth to join the business we create a, they create an opportunity to gain their own income and sustain their own life. For you to be a beekeeper, first you need to you need to have your own niche. You need to know what you want in life. And then uh, beekeeping, it's very easy to learn. Anybody can be a beekeeper as long as you have a space and you have the hives have the land for keeping the bees and then you get you need to have the passion for the bees because when you understand the bees you'll be in business so you'll be able to know and differentiate the real honey and the fake honey in the industry yeah it's very simple as long as you have the passion uh, like uh, last year I, deci I decided to help a, a girl I sponsored her to join the business but I realized that girl she didn't have a passion but she was coming from a poor background so she came at a time she was like she gave up because when you sell you need to have money 
it's not just you know some people they can admire your lifestyle from where i started i was very thin by the way i was very broke and when they see right when they see me right now they feel like that i have it like it's something that you just wake up and decide to get it but they don't realize you have to put some work in it so don't just look at the appearance of someone people have struggled to get where they are and the discipline the true empowerment of women I make sure that I connect them to the same group that I am, that I register them, them, I monitor them, the progress of what they are doing, and then first I realize I just have to study what they like doing. Is it the honey business or is it another business that they like that they can venture into? So when I realize that you have a great potential, now I can tell you like um, I give you the guidelines of honey business how you do about it and where to get it there, there are some who buy from me in wholesale then I trade them I tell them when you start a business the first thing that should come from your mind itself it's not even about branding and everything branding comes later after you have already made a sale now when the business starts growing the profits that you have it's where it's now the time that you take the profits you keep now you take this you keep on multiplying your stocks and now you think of branding registering a company that is a business name it's only 950 to get a business name then from there you can go step by step you increase your stocks i work with people from kayole because there's a time i used to just stay in kayole when i was starting my business uh the girls i get them there are some people that i know then i get referrals from friends we visit because i'm more familiar with kayole i know people who are suffering those who have potential because and when, let me tell you one thing when you come to empowerment you can't empower anyone there are those people who don't want to be empowered yeah there are those who people don't want to be empowered and then you realize you will waste your time I always tell people i share my platforms my social media platform those who want they can join in and contact me because i can't just come to you and tell you that i need to empower you maybe you're not ready that those people don't want money i've tried doing that to people but I, i'm telling you i was disappointed that those people don't want anything to do with life they don't have goals they don't have ambitions so it becomes difficult i get those people who are ready who are suffering young mothers uh, those people who have already dropped out of school those who have finished campus and uh, those people are ready to for, for a change. The challenge that I get, first of all, is uh, you find that the, some people, they want money, quick money. So they'd be telling you, can you please buy me this, buy me food, give me this. And then you realize at the end of the day, you are still growing. You don't have that money to sponsor their needs. Uh, and the other challenge is, as you go to sell in the market, some people confuse me with the Maasai. Some call me a Maasai because I, I sell honey. Uh, other things I get, the challenges is, you get men who want to, as, as they buy honey, they want to buy you also, you know? <laughs> so you, they think you're also the honey of which you're selling a different product. What keeps me going is I love money first of all and i don't like depending from anyone even my own parents i don't like depending from anyone because they can let you down there was a time i was depending on my family all the time and then i realized they disappointed me if i need like ten thousand to buy this and this or go for a vacation they won't give me so i need i have my own rescue if i need money i can just work for it and go straight to the bank and i finance the lifestyle that i want yeah, so it keeps me going. I have to know like I need to fight poverty. I don't want to beg. I don't want to stress anyone. So the motivation alone, because I'm a go-getter, anything I want, I get it. I'm Bernard Opio. I'm the director of Persons with Disability within Amazing Grace. Bao Foundation, uh, because this in, in our foundation we deal with three areas. We deal with widows, orphans, and persons with disability. So I'm the one in charge of persons with disability. I am Kennedy Guasi, the founder and the CEO of Amazing Grace Bao Foundation. Now we are at Nazarene Orphan Center. 
this orphan center is located at Soweto, Salam, Nairobi County, Embakasi East. The children that which are located or being occupied here are total orphans. Some are found in the streets, thrown by their unknown parents. Some are also adopted from hospitals like Mama Lucy and other hospitals. So we as the Amazing Grace Bar Foundation, we chipped in so that we can partner with them to assist them in one, two, three. My journey with uh, Amazing Grace, uh, it's an orphanage uh, that deals with girls, women and widows. Um, my partnership with them came when I met Mr. Ken and Mr. Ben. It was through a networking event that we do. Um, then I, they introduced me to these girls and I said it's a good thing because I love doing charity work, giving back. You know when you, if you have been blessed you have to give back also to the community. So sometimes I come, we bring food, I get a people, the friends, the network that I have, I love networking. When you network, you get exposure from people, you get help because you can't make it in this world when you're alone. You need a connection of people, a group of people who are like-minded to guide you through that. Um, so through that networking event, I met two, those two guys and I decided this is a good opportunity. We can just do donation to these kids. I told them I'm like I'm willing. I'm willing to be part of you guys. They gave me a chance, so we started working with them from 2020. Uh, we have been doing donation like uh, sock making. We go to even other areas. We find a major challenge. We bring food, we bring people, we help them to at least scale up. If I get an opportunity, I tell them the grants, the, some grants that are sent. We, I send them through the WhatsApp messages so that, that they can apply and get uh, some funds that can keep them going and sustain the kids. Majari, she's a, a very, the way I can say, intellectual capital in our amazing Grace Bell Foundation in terms of skills and the talent she has. Uh, she's there in the gap of the youths to encourage the youth. Like the way you can see the, the Annie <coughs> she's making, this one at, actually can be translated into millions of money. So in Amazing Grace, she's our mentor and uh, we want to empower her a lot so that at least we can reach many youths. Marjorie, first, she's a youth and we knew each other through networking. Okay, I'm also, apart from Amazing Grace, I'm a community person, okay? I'm a community, a community health volunteer. So, with majority we know he, her. Uh, she has been. Uh, we have a, our group called Youth and Women Empowerment. So when we are we met in a, a, an area, and then that's when I picked her to come and be with us because I realized that we were sharing some things in common. Yes, and um, also I'm also using her to challenge other youth. Because of her, I know even the, the way she talks, when she talks to the youth, youth becomes to say, wow. So at least I, I should not waste myself. You, she's a go-getter in, in other words. In the next five years, I'll be having different portfolio, owning big businesses, and uh, at least I'll be able to open up foundation for charity works and I want to sponsor people because I've realized people in the uh, orphanage, they suffer a lot with funding. Like as you can see here, you find like uh, people, they need food, they don't have donors, they don't have well wishes, they only come once in a lifetime. So it becomes a challenge and I feel pity for those people. Uh, first of all, I, I would want to thank my father and mother, my siblings. They have really helped me a lot to build the Busy Bee company. And my mentor, Mr. Nick, um, Madam Sarah Karingi, and uh, some friends of mine. You know, the list is big. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a girl of people. 
So, like, shout outs to everyone who have supported me. You must be a go getter in that you go for what you want. If wherever you are, any amount, because sometimes you, when we train the youth, you say that I don't have capital, I don't have capital. While I myself, I tell the youth, even 100 shillings or 50 shillings or nothing, you can start a business out of nothing. Everyone who, who is watching us at uh, as part of now, we need more assistance. We have many orphans suffering, so we need more help. I just want to call upon donors to come and support this organization. Um, if you have um, anything that you want to give, you can just reach out to me. I can bring, or if you want to know more about Amazing Grace, I can just let you come visit the kids, know more about what they do, what they need, their special cases, what they would like to share with you. Because, you know, like these people here, they have even parents who are some of them they left them when they are young they don't have that parental love they need friends they need that support so when you come visit them they feel very, really really happy when you come to support them my advice is anything you want in life it's achievable first of all you need to say what you have never said and do what you never done